Hello, it's Jimmy here at I'm looking at a Honda Accord 2.2 uh, diesel here. This is the engine there that we're looking at. Okay, and this is why I'm looking at the car here today. Did I have a light there? Just disappeared. Check system DPF there. Oh, we've been having a look through the through the car here, uh, trying to figure out what the faults are that the vehicle's got. So it's idling currently. Well, it was idling at 32 millibars of pressure. Um, the coolant temperature is at 96 degrees, slightly high, I think. But it's yeah, we're going above 90 degrees on there. Oh, now the DPF pressure's just jumped back up again, which is a bit weird. So I don't know if we've got maybe a pressure sensor issue but we'll have a look at that a little bit further as we're going along and I hold the revs up to sort of 3000 rpm so we've got pressure of around 180 We'll just hold it here for a couple of minutes just to make sure that that coolant temperature isn't going too high. Okay, so the coolant temperature has actually dropped a little bit. So uh, we'll let go of the accelerator there now. I'm just coming over here to the DPF pressure sensor. Just going to remove the clamp from it. Now I've just got a meter here connected up to that pipe that I've taken off of the pressure sensor. Oh, it's come off. And I'm just confirming that we've got the same pressure on here that, that we have that comes up on the live data. So that's going to confirm to me that the DPF is blocked and the sensor is working. Now, straight to the pressure sensor here, I'm connecting the MIDI back and I'm going to increase the pressure and have a look at the live data there. So if I increase this up to sort of 500 on the gauge, should see the same on there. Okay, so the, the pressure on the gauge going into the sensor matches what's reading from the live data, so we know that the sensor is working and we know that the DPF is blocked from this reading here. Okay, so we know from the manometer that the DPF is definitely blocked, as it says on the live data and we know that the sensor is working because that matches the pressure on the live data as well there so now we'll just go ahead and uh, put some cleaner through the DPF and get the pressure reduced down so before we clean the DPF I'll just go back to where the fault codes were we have got uh, fault codes there for the DPF okay so we have sorry we've just done a full scan here like we don't have any other any other fault codes uh, regarding the DPF system, so there don't seem to be any sort of cause to it. Apart from just local driving, um, you can see the car is getting quite good mileage to the gallon, and it doesn't really do a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of driving. Okay, so the main thing that we're trying to say here is uh, we don't have any other faults that are causing the, the problem. Now, usually, like I always say in my videos, if you've got a DPF, there's a, an issue behind it. Usually that's causing it. Uh, we've done most of the checks that we can do here, um, apart from a smoke test, which we might do. But we can't find any other issues apart from a DPF blockage. Now, restriction ash accumulation, that just means that basically the... The car has tried to do its own clean and it hasn't worked and then an ash accumulation would code would probably be set off for that. Um, and another way that can be set off is just from uh, calculations of the car. So how old the car is, how many how many journeys it, it's done. Um, it hasn't really done a lot of mileage, 70,000. So 
it does it's not always believable that there's an ash restriction uh, but we'll uh, we'll clean that now a lot of people i had done one of these on my last videos and had people comment and saying um you can't clean ash now never mind what this says about ash as long as we get the pressure down the dpf is clean so i've just removed the air intake pipe air with an eight millimeter bolt i've got the launch smoke detector here that's available on launch uk website i'm going to just turn that on so we're ready to produce some smoke and we'll get that connected just to make sure that there is no air leaks because we don't have any other faults on the car um, that will be causing a DPF blockage. Okay, so we're now getting smoke, so we'll get that connected up and we'll just uh, blow up the bladder bag so it seals off into the intake. And we'll give that a few minutes just to see if we can see any sort of coolant leaks. Uh, what I can see is a little bit of a bodge there done on the coolant pipe. Now, I would not like to trust that because if that comes off and you're on a motorway and you don't realise, uh, you can basically ride off your engine if you let the coolant go low. It doesn't take long, a couple of miles you can you can uh, finish off your engine there. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. We don't have any sort of smoke leaking out, so we'll just turn that off. You can see that there that there is some signs where that's been leaking before there, that, that uh, coolant pressure there. And you can see there that the oil is at the correct level and it's a nice clean colour oil for a diesel. The coolant reservoir isn't pressurising, but it looks like we are empty. Right, we'll get that topped up before we do any more, uh, any more work on the engine, but um, in the meantime we'll disconnect this hose again right here from the pressure sensor we're going to fill the dpf with fluid while that fluid's soaking in then we'll get that coolant topped up okay so i've got everything set up i've got my compressor there hooked up to the launch uk dpf gun and i've got the launch dpf cleaning fluid sorry there's a lot of sunlight we've got that there filled up into the gun here and that is connected directly to the DPF pressure hose and we'll just squeeze the trigger get that fluid put in I'm just going to fill the DPF completely up with that fluid let it soak for five minutes then we'll start the engine and we should see the DPF pressure dropping quite fast it may sound silly to some people but I think there are certain brands like this Honda you know, there are certain brands of car that are driven differently. I, th I think most of these Hondas are usually driven quite gently. Um, and they're usually driven by sort of older people who just don't really give them too much, you know, give them too much, um, too much acceleration, what to say. Um, and I think this is the only problem that I'm seeing here with this one. And I've seen it on a couple more with a similar, um, usually get, you know, different types of cars are driven by different types of people um, BMWs for instance you'll always see them driven hard or an Audi um, different types of cars are driven driven differently and I've had that confession from the owner you know he said he doesn't drive it far and he doesn't accelerate it fast at all I mean you can see from the condition of the engine on this vehicle it's very in very clean clean order so that's it all of the fluid is now gone Okay, we've got the DPF fluid filled up and we've filled up the coolant there now as well. So we've got the air inlet retightened up. DPF pressure hose there is reconnected. I'm going to leave the coolant cap off just for a few minutes to see if it needs retopping back up again. Okay, so we start the vehicle up and we'll keep an eye on the pressure. We'll get that changed over to uh, HPA if we can. Okay, we'll hold it up at 3000 RPM. We'll just watch the pressure.
That's what it's at idle now. We are down to five millibars, four. So that's just basically exactly what you'd like to see on a on a brand new DPF around 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 about that pressure. If we hold it back up again to three thousand RPM. We have sort of 45 millibars. Let's reduce them still to 40 millibars. Okay, so it looks like we're finished up around that area. Give it a few revs to clear out the smoke. And again idle we have sort of four or five millibars. So the cooler reservoir has emptied again. Okay, so that's taken about five litres of fluid there. Five litres of coolant gone in there. It's definitely leaking from there. So the car is going to need a new radiator fitting on this. Okay, now we'll come back into the diagnostic machine here. We're going to go to special functions and tell the vehicle that the DPF has been cleaned or it's had a new DPF basically. Okay, so when we come to the special functions, we need this one. So this will recalculate the calculated soot and ash in the DPF. I'm going to press OK on that. Then we'll exit that special function and we'll clear the fault codes. And then if we read the fault codes we should have none. And another thing we'll do on these is the car has, has been serviced so uh, what we're going to do, just to stop the oil, uh, the oil service is causing any issues. We're just going to reset that service oil light as well. And then we'll start the vehicle up. And we should see all of the warnings are gone. Okay, so that's, uh, the vehicle is all finished now on this. It's going to get a, a rad replacement sometime tomorrow maybe. And we'll see you in our next video.